Hello friends. Now I'll have some questions to ask all of you. Now, do you think that uh, every engineer is strong in mathematics? Every engineer has that out of the box thinking. Or if I'll ask you that, uh, uh, is MBA made for an engineer? Ek engineer ko MBA karna chahiye ya fir nahi? Or if I'll talk about the MBA entrance examinations, then can we say that CAT is an easy examination for an engineer and it will be difficult if you are not an engineer or CAT is more inclined towards an engineer rather than a non-engineer. Now we have plenty of questions in our mind and to answer all these queries of yours, to answer all these confusions of yours, I have conducted this session. Uh, which is titled as Engineer's Way to crack, to crack Cat. Now friends, this particular session will be important for anyone who is an engineer and is preparing for CAT and other MB entrance examination, as well as any non-engineer who is uh, basically confused if he or she should go for an MBA or not. So I'll be answering to all your queries in the in this particular session, which are related to your preparation of the examinations. In case you have any kind of misconception in your mind and you want to uh, like uh, have a clarification on uh, that particular thing, then all of you are free to put up your queries in the chat box. So friends, good afternoon. I'm Gaurav Gupta and today we'll be talking about engineers way to crack that. Now, to answer all these things that I've uh, just uh, put forward in front of you, uh, I'll be first of all talking about what are the important elements which are tested in CAT and uh, these MB entrance examinations to understand that whether they will favor an engineer or not. Okay, so let us understand the important elements. So now, uh, any CAT examination starts with the verbal ability and reading comprehension section. Now in verbal ability, I can say that in this particular section, section number one, uh, the major, the most important composition, the most, Im most important part is uh, this reading comprehension. Now majority of the questions comes from reading comprehensions. And uh, if I talk about the number of RC passages that we get in an examination of CAT, it may range from four to five RC passages. Which, which have an average length of 400 to 600 words. So that means reading interpretation skills are required to solve this paper. Now after that you may find the questions of para jumbles which are again based on reading. Then you may find the questions based on para summary in which uh, once again you'll have to read the entire paragraph and identify uh, like which is the correct summary out of the given summaries in the options. So this is section number one of CAT verbal ability and reading comprehension. Now moving on to section number two, which is based on logical reasoning and data interpretation. So yes, you will find the questions of data interpretation that will uh, check your interpretation as well as calculation skills. On the other hand, you will find a lot of questions on logical reasoning that will uh, basically check your out of the box thinking, check your problem solving techniques, check how you are uh, able to handle a particular problem divided in different parts and solve that entire bigger problem uh, and uh, find the solution of that. So some of the important areas that have been tested in the recent years in LRDS section are sequence and arrangements. Now in this, uh, you will have to arrange some particular number of people in uh, linear or a circular arrangement with a lot of parameters which are given, which you'll have to match with them. The next important topic is games and tournaments, which will talk about different types of games and tournaments. Uh, it, it can be a knockout tournament. It can be a round robin tournament. It can be a football tournament. So there are so many different types of questions that can be made on games and tournaments for which obviously you don't require a previous knowledge. So if you'll tell me that, sir, I am pretty bad in sports. So friends, you don't have to play anything. You just have to solve the questions which can be uh, like uh, you can deal with them uh, in a logical manner and you will be able to, you should be able to solve questions like that. Then the questions can be based on Venn diagrams, routes and networks, uh, data interpretation questions can be the form of uh, tables, caselets, bar graphs, pie charts, histograms, and there are plenty of ways in which the data can be given.
So this is the second portion of CAT. Now the next portion which is entirely mathematical is quantitative aptitude and uh, five different areas are there from which questions are generally asked in the examination of CAT and any other MB entrance examination. Now these areas you all must be familiar about these names because uh, you have done all these uh, areas in the elementary classes. So talking about arithmetic, algebra, geometry, modern maths. Now modern maths is basically a combination of uh, permutation combination, probability, set theory and so on and so forth. And the last area is number theory. Number systems which will uh, check, uh, which will ask you about the divisibility rules the classification of numbers, the properties of LCM and HCF. And I'm sure that you all have heard all these names uh, in, in, uh, in, in the schooling. Okay. So these are some important areas or these are the three areas. These are the three elements. These are the three sections in which the entire examination is divided. Now looking at this examination as a whole, I can say that yes, majority of the questions are based on your mathematical aptitude. So if I talk about section two, which is logical reasoning and data interpretation, then definitely if you are good, I'm not saying strong, but if you are good, you are above average in mathematics, then you will generate an area of interest in that particular section. And uh, like unquestionably section number three is complete mathematics. So if you had interest uh, in mathematics in your standard eighth, ninth or tenth, then definitely it will be easier for you to attempt this paper. All right. So is it uh, uh, like uh, good to say that an engineer should pursue an MBA or an MBA entrance examination is more friendly for an engineer? So I'll answer the second question later on but first of all let us understand that if i am an engineer if i'm doing engineering from any of the colleges so should i pursue an mba or not now, if i ask this question to any of the non-engineer student then they will say say that engineer ka mba mein kya kaam hai mba is all about business mba is all about finance mba is all about human resources how you manage uh, different people, right? So what is the use of an engineer in MBA? So friends, yes, uh, there are so many fields in which uh, uh, if you are an engineer, then you will qualify for that particular position. And there are plenty of colleges also, which gives preference to engineers. I'm not saying that there is no college which, uh, which does not give any preference to a non-engineer. But definitely there are some roles, there are some companies in which a manager needs to have an engineering acumen for the positions for uh, like for the specializations like uh, operations, for specializations like telecommunication management, for specializations like supply chain management, right? So these are some specializations in which if you are an engineer, then you will be able to justify that position, you'll be able to justify that work that is uh, like uh, that is expected from you in a much better way so yes if somebody will ask me that should an engineer pursue an mba so yes there are plenty of roles for an engineer but if somebody will ask me should an engineer pursue an mba in finance or marketing so why not why not guys why can't an engineer go for a role uh, which is related to an investment banker Okay, so let us talk about this. So I have a very small story uh, uh, to, to basically elaborate this. So the story starts with a question that uh, after 10 standard, yes, we were asked to uh, select uh, different specialization when it comes to standard 11. And uh, our studies got bifurcated in three major areas, humanities, commerce and science. And after that, science was also divided in two different areas that was uh, engineering and medical, right? Now, how many of you were given an option to select this particular thing by yourself once you were done with your 10th standard? I know the answer, not most of us, not all of us. So there were some students, there were some people who were forced to select a particular uh, domain of uh, studies 
now uh, should i call it like they were forced or uh, they were not attracted towards that but because of peer pressure they were uh, uh, forced to get into engineering or medical entrance examinations and they were unable to do the thing of their choice now once we are into graduation then at that time most of us understands about our areas of interest so yes if let's say on later stages you realize that you don't have uh, that engineering acumen in your mind and uh, you want to go and do something which is related to probably finance or uh, marketing or maybe something else so why not you should be given an option to do that so at that time if let's say you are doing much better you have more information you have more knowledge about finance than a student uh, who is pursuing a bcom then why not you should go for an mba in finance so yes uh, irrespective of your specialization uh, at the time of graduation you are given an option to select any of the specializations at the time of mba so yes anyone can pursue an mba it's not only about engineer anyone can pursue mba uh, irrespective of uh, the specialization or uh, uh, the course that you have pursued at the time of graduation all right so this is the answer for this now the next thing is does cat favors an engineer so uh, the answer for this question is yes as well as no i will talk about the written examination of cat so yes it is engineer friendly now what do i mean by engineer friendly so let us elaborate on that now who generally goes for engineering or can i say that uh, every engineer is good in mathematics ask yourself so engineers would be able to give me a better answer for this non engineer will not be able to give so as a non engineer everybody would think that engineers ka to maths acha hi hota hai that is why they are pursuing engineering but get into an engineering college and talk to each and every person i myself is an engineer i know that not all of my friends who were doing engineering were good in mathematics not all of my friends who were doing engineering were able to crack cat i'm not asking about the final admit in an mba college i'm talking about only this examination or i'll be more specific not every engineer is able to crack the qa section of cat okay so it's absolutely a myth harshad you are absolutely right so it's absolutely a myth that every engineer is good in mathematics so how can we say that cat favors engineers okay so let's take it in other way around now a person who is engineer by choice that means i can say that the person has selected the person was uh, given an option of selecting his or her career yes generally we have seen that a person who is good in mathematics or a person who is good in practical activities like physics chemistry and so on so a person who is good at all these things is a person who is more inclined towards engineering and yes in general we can say that a person who is an engineer a person who is an engineer is expected to be good in mathematics so that is why people thinks that cat favors engineers because uh, two of the sections out of the three sections that uh, are asked in cat are based on mathematics directly or indirectly okay so yes uh, we can say that uh, engineers uh, ko advantage hota hai cat mein because uh, thoda sa unka mathematical acumen better hota hai as compared to a non engineer but once again simultaneously we cannot say that uh, if i am a non engineer then i'll not be good in mathematics i have seen students who are non engineers who are from commerce backgrounds who are from humanities backgrounds doing much better as compared to an engineer in the qa section as well as lrdi section okay so this is the answer for this cat favors engineers partially but this thing cannot be generalized this this thing cannot be mentioned about each and every engineer or each and every non engineer all right so this is one important thing so the next thing is uh like after cat the second stage of selection procedure okay now if i talk about this particular round if i talk about this particular stage then can we say that engineers are not very strong or engineers sucks at this place right 
So the problem with engineers is the habits that they have developed over the course of time, uh, which favors them when it comes to writing CAT examination, when it comes to the QA section. But when it comes to the second stage of selection procedure, which requires you to be good in group discussion or personal interview or essay writing, then if you think that engineers are good in mathematics, then you are forced to assume that engineers will not be good at this particular stage. Okay, so it's not only about CAT, it's about getting the final admission in an MBA college, which is uh, a combination of both CAT as well as uh, the GDPI selection round. Okay, now if I combine all these things, then I can say that engineers will have an equal advantage as compared to a non-engineer. All right, now moving ahead, in that case, what should be the preparation strategy if you are an engineer? So I'm assuming that the students who are watching this session, I'm assuming that the students who are watching this session, they are average or maybe above average in mathematics and they are below average in anything which is non-mathematical. Okay, so what should be the preparation strategy if I am pretty strong or above average in mathematics and I don't have other skills uh, uh, which will help me in cracking this entire selection procedure. So let us understand that. Now, talking about an engineer, the expected strengths, these are the expectations from an engineer, okay, from a person who is good in mathematical skills. So the expected strengths as far as CAT examination is concerned can be these three areas. First of all, obviously, direct mathematics, which is the entire section number three of CAT. Now, this is quantitative aptitude. Okay, so if I was doing good in mathematics in standard 8th, 9th and 10th, then the topics like arithmetic, algebra, modern mathematics, number system and geometry, I may be having some of these areas as the strengths, if not all. Okay, so that will give me an advantage over the other students who are not pretty strong in these areas. Secondly, if I used to like mathematics as a subject, then I'm expected to be good in calculations. That is the second point I have mentioned, data interpretation. Now, data interpretation is basically analyzing a given set of data. Now, this data is in the form of numbers. So if I'm not an engineer, if I don't like mathematics, then I'll be afraid with numbers. Okay, so generally, aisa hota hai. non-engineers, so they will, they will be afraid of numbers. So leave behind the calculations if you'll show them uh, a lot of numbers, a lot of charts, a lot of pie charts and so on and so forth, then they would not like to enter that particular question. Rather, they will uh, be attracted to a question in which uh, the data is written in terms of words rather than numbers. Okay, so if you were good in mathematics, then definitely you are expected to be good in calculations and hence you are expected to get into the questions of data interpretations and solve them easily. All right, probably after practice because you are not in uh, touch with these skills. So probably after practice, you initially have uh, uh, these things as your area of interest and later on these things can become your strengths. All right. Next, up to a certain extent, not completely, not necessarily, but logical reasoning. So logical reasoning is one area in which uh, your mathematical acumen, your uh, aptitude, general quantitative aptitude is required to solve a problem to like basically deal with problem obviously logical reasoning is not related to numbers it is not related to calculations but still it requires certain kind of thing that is uh, expected to be there in a person who likes who used to like mathematics and uh, rather than a person who never liked mathematics so i can say that two-third two-third of the cat is inclined towards a person who likes mathematics and only one third that is verbal RC portion is inclined towards a person or is made for a person who don't like mathematics. All right. Now, to be more justifiable, I can say that if I talk about the second section, logical reasoning and data interpretation. So over the years, we have seen that there is 
a drastic fall in the number of questions of data interpretation. Last year also, there was only one set. There were only five questions out of 20 questions that came in LRDI section. Okay, so DI ke sirf five questions the, which can be more advantageous uh, for a person who is an engineer. And there were 15 questions. That means three sets that came on logical reasoning. Okay, so I can say that over the years, we have seen the paper to be like getting neutralized for an engineer or a non-engineer. Okay, thoda sa balance create kar rahe One section is verbal, that is made for people who don't like mathematics. One section is quantitative aptitude, that is purely mathematics. Now, in between, there is a section which is balanced for both engineers and non-engineers or which is balanced for both the people who like or don't like mathematics. Fine. So over the years, we have seen the CAT authorities creating a good balance between uh, uh, mathematics and non-mathematics, right? So these are the expected strengths for an engineer. Now, what happens with an engineer while he or she is preparing for CAT examination is they, uh, they know that fine, they'll be able to do mathematics. They'll be able to handle the questions which are based on mathematics. And to kya hota iski wajay se, right? So what happens is uh, they tend to get overconfident with these areas. So they start running towards verbal section and they forget about quant section. This is one major thing that happens. So now if I start running towards verbal section and completely ignore, completely ignore this mathematical part, then the strength will become a weakness for me. If I'll not spend any like uh, at least like minimum amount of time on these areas, then rather than these areas becoming my strength, they will end up becoming my weakness. So what you must do is while preparing for CAT, you can divide your entire time, uh, what I would say is wisely. So let's say you're studying for uh, five hours in a day, then you can take out uh, 70 or 75 percent of your time and devoted towards verbal skills and the remaining 20 30 percent of your time towards quantitative aptitude right uh, if you are if you, if you think that you are strong in mathematics then you must target a percentile of 99 percentile plus in this section so that this can cover up the other section and you end up getting a wonderful overall percentile in CAT. Obviously, verbal RC weak hai, to uske andar, like it will be difficult for you to score 99 percentile. So, cover up karne ke liye, quant and uh, LRDI section is necessary. And you must target a minimum of 99 percentile in these two areas. Okay. Next, uh, make sure that these strengths remains your strengths. So, this is what I mentioned right now. If you think that your strength is quant, then make sure that they remain strengths. Okay, they will not become your weaknesses. Now, the next step is weakness for majority of engineers is the first section as well as what comes after CAT. So let us look at these pointers one by one and understand how we can improve these areas. So first of all, the major challenge for engineers or the people who like mathematics is they don't have reading habits. So we are not... Uh, uh, like uh, we, we never used to read books. We never be used to read newspapers. So this is one area that requires a lot of improvement. Now sitting like today, we are somewhere around eight to nine months away from CAT 2023, right? Now this much time is enough to build up your reading skills. Now these reading skills will help you at a lot of places. Number one, directly it will help you in section one of CAT where you have uh, to deal with reading comprehension. So if you don't have reading habits, first of all, you will be, not be able to read a particular text at the required speed. So a RC passage, hai, it is of 500 words. If you are required to read it in two minutes or maybe three minutes, you will take six to seven minutes to read that entire passage because of which you will not be able to attempt required number of questions. This was number one. Number two is poor reading habits. If you have, then after 
even devoting six to seven minutes on an RC passage, you will not be able to understand each and everything that is there in the passage. Comprehending the passage, interpretation of the passage, understanding the passage. So for that, you will read it again. That will require more time. Once you will go to the questions, you will not be able to understand all the questions and you will not be able to link these questions with the information that is given in the passage. So that will uh, lead to spending more time and will also lead to a reduced amount of accuracy while solving RC passages, right? This is number one. Second major challenge that uh, we genius face is poor grammatical skills. Now, obviously grammar is required in uh, CAT when it comes to understanding a text and it is required at one more place. Now, what is the second round of selection procedure? We call it GD and PI. No, we should now call it GD, PI and VAT. Okay, what is VAT? It is written ability test. Now, written ability test is a part in most of the colleges and uh, VAT has replaced group discussion in most of the colleges, especially IIMs. So, IIMs may have normally group discussion nahi hota you will be asked to write an essay in the second round of selection procedure. Now, if you have poor grammar, if you have limited vocabulary, then you will not be able to write a particular thing in a proper way. You will not be able to express whatever is there in your mind, right? So, reading skills are necessary to create the content, content for WAT. Right, point number one. So, reading skills are not in newspaper, nahi ho, then you will not have enough amount of information which you can write on a piece of paper. Okay, secondly, poor grammatical skills. So, you want to write something and you are writing something else. Right, I'll not be able to understand what is the idea that you want to convey with your essay. I'll not be able to understand. Limited vocabulary. You will not be able to understand a lot of words in the reading comprehension or in the first passage, okay, in the first uh, section of CAT. And secondly, you will not be able to use those vocabulary words while writing an essay, all right. Lacking communication skills, verbal or non-verbal is uh, the other area that uh, it might not hamper you in case of CAT, but it may hamper in the case of group discussions or personal interview. So if you don't have good communication skills, then again, once again, you'll not be able to uh, talk freely uh, to, to the person who is taking your interview. All right. So developing all these skills is very important. And there is a limited time. There are some limited ways in which this can be done. And this should be done as soon as possible. So how we can improve all these things? Number one, starting today, you must start reading a newspaper. Pick up any newspaper, pick up any English newspaper, be it Hindustan Times, be it Times of India. So if you are lacking these skills, then you must start with these easy papers like Times of India and Hindustan Times. Right? These are two very easy papers, believe me. Okay. Now, after that, you can uh, like uh, once you have started reading these newspapers, so make sure that you are spending at least one and a half to two hours on daily basis for the next two or three months. I'm not asking you to spend two hours on daily basis up till CAT. Fine. Two hours daily basis for the next three months, definitely. And then later on, you can reduce this time because at that time you will be uh, you would have developed the speed understanding everything that will uh, require for this examination right so next three months ke liye, daily two hours ke liye newspaper read karo what all sections in the newspaper you must read the front page definitely the business page the editorial page global news so all these are majorly important portions that you must read which will help you in developing your verbal skills as well as uh, uh, the knowledge that you require to perform good at the time of group discussions, personal interviews and WATs. Okay, so this is one way you can improve your verbal skills for CAT examination. Secondly, if you want to improve your communication skills, then uh, you must talk in English in your day-to-day -day life. So you must be having siblings at home. You must be having parents at home. You must be having lots of friends. So make sure that you are using English language as a part of your communication and you restrict your communication 
to this language for the next few days. Initially, you'll hesitate a lot. It will hamper, like uh, you'll not be able to communicate whatever you want to say. But slowly and gradually, definitely you will improve. All right. Now, this is one major thing that will bother you at the time of CAT and even after that. In case you don't want to be like uh, you don't want this thing to be uh, uh, an area of concern for you, then you must start working on all these things starting from now only or as soon as you have uh, uh, seen this session. All right. So friends, that's from my side for this session uh, for all of you. Uh, I, I, I believe that uh, those who are serious for CAT will start incorporating all these things in their lives as soon as possible, right? So all the very best to all of you uh, for your future. Now, in case you have any other query in your mind, you want to ask any other thing uh, that is bothering you. So you may leave a comment in the chat box. I am there for another one or two minutes. So you all can post any of the queries that is uh, any of the questions or any of the problems that is bothering you for the preparation of CAT. Now, these are our previous year CAT toppers. Now, friends, uh, in case you are planning to start your preparation for CAT 2023, so you can enroll in uh, the batches that uh, like uh, we are offering here. So CAT 2023 comprehensive program the complete details are there on your screen. In case you want to be a part of uh, Baiju's exam prep, this, these are uh, the things that will be available to you and uh, you can post your query in the chat box or uh, there is a link that is given in the description of this se session. You can use that link to basically understand what program we are offering you. Also, we are conducting a scholarship test for CAT preparation programs. So you can avail up to 90% scholarship on all the CAT preparation programs. The scholarship test is on 1st of April at 7 p.m. So please do register for this scholarship test and uh, avail this scholarship. All right. How to manage CAT preparation along with job and studies? Now, this is one big question that will be there in your mind and Saral Sir will be helping you in solving this particular, like solving this uh, uh, major challenge of your life on 4th of April at uh, 7 p.m. So please don't miss this session. Also brush up your basics by attempting quizzes on daily basis by downloading our app. So yes, we do have an app uh, by the name of Baiju's exam prep. So you can download this app and get daily section wise quizzes uh, on, on this app. So that will be a wonderful way of uh, brushing up your concepts as well as testing your knowledge. Okay, so please do that as well. So please do get social with us on all these social media platforms. That's all from my side for the day. Thank you, uh, Gaurav Patil, now for your guidance. Okay, help me score 97 and get... Wow, wow. So Gaurav Patil is saying that... Um, because of our guidance, because of my guidance, he was able to get 97.46 percentile in CAT and get all IM calls except Bangalore and Calcutta. My God, great. So Gaurav Patil, congratulations to you for achieving this fate. And uh, I am hopeful that you'll be able to convert IM Ahmedabad. All the very best to you for this. So friends, thank you very much for being a part of this session. In case you have any such query, you can please post in the chat box and I'll be happy to resolve your queries. All the very best for your future. Bye-bye.